Well, I've always had an interest in, in local history, and I've written a column for the Longview News Journal since 1978, and it has evolved into a, a, a local East Texas history uh, column. So, and the, uh, the depot has just always been a, it's a fascinating story because Longview, like so many other cities in East Texas, uh, exists because of the railroad. If your trip to work takes 20 minutes today, imagine how long it would take without a single road. Now remove your car from the picture. On foot, it would be closer to two hours one way. Going from coast to coast by horse, wagon, and coach took eight months or even longer. When the Transcontinental Railroad was carved out of the wilderness, what took months became just days. Eight days from sea to shining sea was a miracle and it helped to knit the nation back together and begin the revolution of American production that changed the world. Over the years, rail has played greater and lesser roles in national and local affairs, but in Longview, Texas, it's on the upswing once again. To get a full grasp of what that means, let's look back at where it began. This current depot has been a rail passenger station since 1871. A Amtrak told us that the uh, train station was the uh, the city's living room to the world, and that's true. The fact that uh, the city of Longview had two depots, two passenger depots, for really for decades. Uh, we had, of course, the, uh, the, the depot in the Longview Junction, and uh, then we had the uh, depot which was downtown, which I actually called the Uptown Depot. That was the Texas and Pacific uh, Depot. This rebuild is true to the original 1939 blueprints. Well, the building was designed apparently by railroad engineers and they built it to, to bridge standards. And so it's such a heavy duty building uh, that that impressed me. The brickwork uh, is, is, was very well done uh, and very accurate. Uh, I checked some of the dimensions uh, in the real world and compared those to the plans and they were within a 16th of an inch, which for brickwork is, is unheard of now. The uh, window sills and the, and the trim that you see up there are precast and preformed concrete. Um, and I checked the dimensions of this masonry uh, to the plans and found that these openings uh, within a sixteenth of an inch of what they said on the plans, which is remarkable. The uh, Southern Pacific Railroad was extending its land uh, westward. And it was in Shreveport, then it reached Marshall. Marshall was a, real, a railroad center for many, many years. They built the tracks to Hallsville. Well, in, uh, in 1871, they finished the tracks to the new little community of Longview. And so they're gonna have a big celebration in Longview. So uh, the, uh, the mayor and the city officials and a number of uh, residents uh, got in their buggies and on horseback and they rode to uh, Hallsville. And they got on the little train and uh, there was a speech and uh, you know great hoopla about uh, the first train rolling into Longview. So they, they started the little train down the track and it got about two miles and it jumped the track. Everybody had to get off the train while they put the little engine back on the track. They got it back on, everybody climbed back on, they got a couple of more miles, the train jumped the track again. Well. One of the folks who was on the train was Oliver Pegues, who was a, a pioneer businessman, Pegues, great Longview name, and uh, he noticed the second time that they had, had uh, stopped in front of uh, Farmer Green's uh, place. And so uh, Mr. Pegues got off the train, walked over to uh, uh, Mr. Green, he was home, asked if he could borrow a horse. So he borrowed Mr. Green's horse and rode into Longview and got there hours before the train ever arrived. And in his memoirs, uh, Mr. Begee's uh, remembered that uh, the, the round trip from uh, Hallsville to Longview and then back to Hallsville took a total of two days. I have done some historical renovations before. It's, uh, I'm kind of interested in uh, architectural forensics and, and how, how things were built and, and how those things change over time. And this is my first train station. Many years ago, a, uh, a retiring railroad official gave me an old clock out of this building. And uh, it looks like a 1950s school clock, probably. And I took it just, uh, in fact, uh, when I retire, I plan on taking it home with me. 
and we looked up the serial number on that clock and it is the original 1939 waiting room clock and I'm going to donate it back to the restoration so on opening day this same clock that hung in that same position on the day this depot opened in 1940 will be back in place and it still works like a charm. For years uh, folks kept getting off uh, at the wrong depot. So uh, in 1883, uh, there were some local businessmen, they decided to uh, uh, organize the, the Longview uh, Transit Company, which was a trolley uh, firm, and they uh, started a, a mule-drawn trolley that uh, served the two depots. And it, would, it started at uh, the uh, Uptown Depot, the Texas and Pacific Depot, and the trolley would go uh, up uh, Fredonia Street and then head east on uh, Methvin out to uh, Longview Junction where the, uh, uh, was the International and Great Northern Railroad Depot was located there. It was only about, uh, about three quarters of a mile long. Well, this project is important to, to the city of Longview because it's a monument project. You know, uh, one of the historical footnotes, important historical footnotes to this building, you can see where they've been filled, but you have four holes representing rectangles in these waiting rooms. We, we happen to be in the west waiting room right now, and this rectangle said, white patrons only. And if we step right over here, Uh, not all of these holes have been filled yet, and if you'll you'll see you'll see where they were. Uh, these holes have not yet been filled, but this rectangle, a matching sign, and it said "colored patrons only." E even later than that, into very early adolescence, I, coming from a railroad family, even though I was born and reared in Texarkana, um, I can remember. Uh, Indelibly, indelibly, the reason that we have two large waiting rooms in that station is because one of them said colored patrons only and the other sign said white patrons only. And I can remember seeing, th those are not anecdotal to me, I can remember seeing those signs. And I guess in the restoration, um, what I've appreciated the most is Yes, we've restored the, his, the historic old TNP Depot, but what we've done is make it into a 21st century multimodal rail bus transit facility. You might get sick of me hearing those terms, but, but that's what we've done here. And now, you know what, we're in the 21st century. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, straight, gay, it doesn't matter. This is a regional transportation hub for all uh, of the citizens of the region. And, uh, you know, in 1939, that probably was not its original intent. Wow, what a great day for the city of Longview, restoring our historical train depot. The, his the history of the depot is so significant and it's so rich to our community. But history does not stop here today. We are moving forward in the city of Longview. The depot stands paramount as we revitalize this area and as we create perhaps one of the first regional transportation hubs in East Texas. So this is a great time. It has been in the past and we are continuing to blaze the trails. Just sit back, relax, and wait on the other stories that will follow in years to come. As mayor, seeing this project move forward has been deeply rewarding. Now, let's see where it goes from here.